My name is Andy Udell. I'm president of North America for Kaliditas Therapeutics. Kaliditas is a biopharma company uh, based in Sweden, which is our headquarters, and, and I uh, manage the U.S., been with the company for five years, been in the industry for over 20 years now, helping uh, really move biotech companies from the clinical stage to commercial stage companies. So IgA nephrop nephropathy is a rare autoimmune disease, and it, it affects the kidneys, and its prevalence in the United States is about 130 to 100, 150,000 people. In Europe, it's about 200,000 people. And in China, it's about four to five million estimated. Um, more than 50% of these patients will <clears throat> progress to end stage renal disease. And what's unique about this disease is while it's a kidney disease, it's, it's really believed to originate in the gut, in the distal part of the small intestine in the ileum, where you have predominantly most of your uh, galactose, uh, you're producing most of your galactose deficient IgA antibodies, where the predominant amount of payers patches are located. Uh, and these payers patches this in the gut associated lymphoid tissue uh, produce these galactose deficient IgA1 antibodies. And people that get this disease, they have an elevated levels of these uh, uh, galactose deficient antibodies that enter systemic circulation. And then what happens is your body has an autoimmune reaction to these and forms these clusters really that get stuck in the kidney and cause inflammation and damage in the kidneys uh, and often lead to end stage renal disease, which is believed to happen in about 50% of these patients in between 10 and 20 years. So, so patients typically present one of two ways. They, they either uh, notice that they have blood in the urine and they'll go to their doctor who will then test uh, the urine and, and see that they're leaking protein okay, spilling protein. And then what will happen is they'll wind up that a nephrologist who will make this diagnosis. Um, sometimes they try to treat empirically, but really the only way to officially diagnose IgA nephropathy is with a kidney biopsy. The other way, I should say, the other way that it's diagnosed is some people sometimes routinely, you're just going for an annual physical and they test the urine and they see they're spilling uh, protein there. And then they go through the same, you know, tests, but but they really didn't think they had any symptoms or anything, and it just happened to be with a routine annual checkup or going for insurance, life insurance, those kind of things. So so today, uh, well, prior to the launch of our product, uh, these patients were really treated with high doses. Well, first they're typically optimized on uh, blood pressure lowering medications, RAS inhibitors, okay. And then typically after that, it was it was it varied in how it was treated, but but often uh, high high doses of systemic prednisone, you know, and and methylprednisone systemic steroids were used with these patients. And uh, if that didn't work, it was kind of the kitchen sink that was kind of thrown at these patients with uh, nothing that was specifically designed or indicated to help them. So, so Tarpeia was invented by a nephrologist and an immunologist, and, and it was really designed to target the origin of the disease that we talked about in, in the distal part of the ileum. So, so it, it contains a two-part delivery system, okay? One is the enterocoded capsules that are pH-dependent that won't dissolve until it reaches the pH that's consistent with this part of the distal ileum. It's at that point that capsule disintegrates and releases the triple coated beads uh, and the active ingredient is budesonide. And budesonide is a, a well-characterized, high potent, topically, topical, local acting immunomodulator. And uh, it has inherent properties that, that has a very high first pass metabolism. Uh, about 90% is metabolized by the liver, which really helps provide this favorable side effect profile compared to these high doses of systemic steroids that are often used to treat these patients. So, so the Nefegard trial studied and enrolled patients uh, that had biopsy-proven diagnosis. They had proteinuria greater than one gram. Their EGFR was between 35 and 90 milliliters per minute. And uh, these patients were, were had uh, to also be well-controlled on blood pressure medication uh, while on op uh, optimized RAS blockade, which stayed in the background for all the patients. 
The patients were then randomized and studied, treated with uh, nine months of 16 milligrams once a day of Tarpeo. And uh, after this nine months, they were observed. So there was an interim analysis of the first 199 patients, and that was based on proteinuria, the primary endpoint for that analysis. And that really formed the basis for an accelerated approval, which we achieved in mid-December 2021. And the trial kept going and, and continued for the full data set, which is 364 patients. And that primary endpoint was EGFR. So it, it, and what that demonstrated, once again, this was nine months of treatment, and that was over a two-year period. So it was nine months of treatment and a 15-month observational uh, period. And for those patients, it confirmed statistically significant benefit over placebo in the EGFR. And it, it, it sustained this benefit, that this clinically relevant benefit that it obtained, uh, uh, excuse me, it, 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 it maintained this clinically relevant uh, uh, reduction in EGFR, uh, which is supporting uh, the notion that this is a disease-modifying medication. So, so right now, we're operating under an accelerated approval, right? And it was based on proteinuria. So, so what's most important is this information from the full data set is now being, we filed in June of this year uh, with the PDUF of December 20th for full unconditional approval. Okay, and, and what's what's big and what's important to that is the indication should change. It's going to move from a surrogate endpoint of proteinuria to EGFR, which is really a, a surrogate for kidney function and really is what's most important for these patients is to preserve your kidney function. So having a different indication will certainly be important. And as this information gets into the public, they start to see that the treating nephrologists are starting to see the consistent clinical benefits of the drug um, in their, from the accelerated approval, but certainly now more and more data that's come out uh, to support this.